<sighs> Holy fuck. <laughs> what an episode. We're here for episode 11, I believe, of the Clone Wars. It's called Shattered. Let's talk about that. Clone review. Ahsoka has captured Maul. We saw that at the end of last episode. And as the Mandalorians are arresting the rest of the Mandalorians and, you know, taking them into custody and whatnot, we see that Bo-Katan has a Soko lightsabers on her. I don't know how she managed to find them, but... What does it matter? So as Ahsoka delivers more to the custody of the Mandalorians, they're, you know, they're kind of well-versed in holding Force users, if you know what I'm saying. She uh, receives notification that there's a, a meeting with the Council. Rex is sent to go and uh, bring her to this meeting. Anakin was there. Or is there. Well, a Anakin's there, and, you know, she wants to speak to Anakin. Especially after what Maul's told her. Because, Jesus Christ. There was a lot. <laughs> so we're at this like, little meeting, you know, it's one of the holograph meetings. And uh, Anakin isn't there. He's vanished. And just before Rex and Ahsoka walk in, Mace Windu's talking to them about the plot to destroy the Jedi, as we hear in the voiceover trailer. It's all coming together. We linked up with episode 3 two episodes ago and now we're, we're in that four day time frame of the episode we see Mace Windu, we see Yoda, we see Kedimundi and we see Aayla Secura two of which we know die ah, why are they doing this to us? why are they showing us these Jedi? <laughs> please <laughs> please Kedimundi is the most radical of these four as they're discussing the dark side surrounding the Chancellor Kedimundi suggests that if he does not give up his powers he should be removed from office like fully removed and Mace Windu's like we'd have to take control of the senate to do that peacefully and I, I don't think Kidamundi meant peacefully and we we know Mace also doesn't mean peacefully as we uh as we saw in 2005 so they congratulate Soka on her capture of Maul but she says she did it as a citizen of the Republic not a Jedi which you know kind of saddens Yoda obviously she was Booted from the order, she wasn't booted from the order, she was almost kicked from the order and then chose to leave, which was probably the best decision to be fair. And we find out that Windu had actually sent Anakin away in the time that the circle was coming to inform the Chancellor that the fact that they found Grievous on Utapau, which we uh, we also know happened, which is why we don't see a circle in episode 3. Very clever, Dave. Very clever. So, unfortunately, the Smashing of the window last episode does not link up with the smash of the window in episode 3. What a shame, but that would mean Order 66 would have been called while Ahsoka was fighting Maul, so... Y you live and learn. So they're like, oh, Kenobi has found Grievous? The, the, Maul, the war may be over soon. And then Mace drops, that depends on the Chancellor. Ahsoka's like, what do you mean? Really aloof about it? It's like, sorry citizen. Because obviously Ahsoka said she was a citizen of the Republic, so... She's not privy to the matters of the Jedi Council. But she's like, yeah, you know what, fair enough. <laughs> I did say that, so uh, you do you fam. And then the Council, they leave, apart from Yoda. Yoda stays to talk to Ahsoka, asking her if she has a message for Anakin. Which she, you know, she politely declines, saying she'd rather tell him in person. But she also doesn't tell Yoda about what Maul told her about Sidious's plans for Anakin. So... Maybe she could have said something. I don't know. So we find out that Ahsoka has told Rex about what Maul has said about Anakin. I mean, clearly they're like great friends. Anakin is their commander and also a great friend, so it only makes sense. We see Maul in some sort of like really nicely decorated Mandalorian prison, which is specialized for holding Force users. It, it looks fucking sick, to be fair. I thought they'd throw him in carbonite at first, but then we saw it was like this intricately decorated holding block similar to a carbon freezing chamber. This is obviously a relic from when the Mandalorians and Jedi were at war. One of the one of the many one of the, one of the many times that happened. Hey. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Right, cuz they're using this weapon from when the Mandalorians fought Jedi and obviously Mandalorians were involved in the training of the clones. So, it's like they're good at killing Jedi. They've trained clones who are good at killing Jedi. They have this Jedi holding device. Oh, wow. I just thought that was a little, a little, a little nice connection there. Both says it's a weapon from a bygone age when Mandalorians had reason to fight the you force wielding maniacs, as she puts it. It's like a little bit of friendly banter between her and Ahsoka. They're really, really a really good like duo, a really good duo, and uh, 
we also see Ursa Ren in the Clone Wars art style. She looks she looks far better than she did in Rebels, I must say. The the Clone Wars art style did her good. Uh, yeah, I mean, anyway, it's an interesting statement regarding what we know is very close. <laughs> Yikes. This episode, man, it had me shaking the whole way through. I was... I just wanted to see what I'm next. Like, it was such a good episode. Action-wise, it wasn't as good as the last episode, but it was still an amazing episode nonetheless. I'm very excited for episode 12, which we're getting in three days. May the 4th, I think. And they're also announcing a new show, so there's going to be videos on that. Watch watch this space. <laughs> Subscribe. And in Wall is transported to a Venator. There are shock troopers, which we know are Palpatine's like, special forces. So they're the ones with the red markings that we see when um, Anakin is burnt to a crisp on uh, Mustafa. Yeah, so those ones are there. They're like loyal to the Emperor. They do whatever he wants. His special forces, his shock troopers, which is why they're called shock troopers, essentially. So yeah, there's a, a small detachment of them sent to deal with Maul's capture. These boys are cold. They're not like the uh, clones that serve under Jedi. They, they don't really uh, have that sort of connection. <coughs> it's not Corona, I promise. And um, as he's in the transport show going to the Venator, we see we see Maul reach out with the Force. Trying to reach out to Ahsoka, and Ahsoka kind of notices, but she doesn't really know what he's doing for, per se. I think he's trying to reach out in the Force to see what's going to happen. Now, as the uh, transport shuttle lands on the Venator, we see that there are a lot of clones. I don't know. Like, holy shit, there's like a whole battalion. I don't know how many is in a battalion in the Star Wars universe. I, I do, but I just don't know off the top of my head. Let's just say there's a lot of clones. And Maul is now in custody. He's been sent to the detention block of the Venator in his little uh, Force blocking prison type beat. Now we see Ahsoka and Rex on Dab Bridge as they launch into hyperspace and um, all the clone naval officers on board are saluting her. They're, they're ha they look happy to see her, which is kind of fucked up when you think about it, because we know what's coming. We know what's going to happen. Rex asks Ahsoka if she's okay, you know, if she's had if she has anything on her mind. And Ahsoka talks to Rex about how the Jedi are meant to be protectors of the peace, not warriors. And all she's known since she was a Padawan is the Clone Wars. We got introduced to it in the Clone Wars movie, and that's all she's known since just fighting just like Rex and the clones and Rex actually you know kind of sympathizes with that like him and the clones have mixed feelings about this war they were bred for it and without it they wouldn't exist and so it's like well at least one good thing came out of it she got a great friend why are you doing this to me man why are they having such a heartfelt moment before Order 66 <sighs> that shit hit me man I did almost tear for that scene, I'm not gonna lie. And they share a salute. It's fucking adorable. Oh my god. Okay, as a, a, a briefing comes through to the Venator, Rex asks so if she wants to see, you know, might have news on Kenobi and uh, his status with Grievous, but she declines, you know, she opts to rather stare into hyperspace than look at a briefing report that might have some information about her friend. You know, just, just how it is, isn't it? Vibes. Then it happens. Maul and Ahsoka feel it. Anakin has turned to the dark side. And as they both hear this, we hear audio from Revenge of the Sith when Mace had Sidious at her end of a lightsaber and Anakin intervened. We hear audio clips from that as Ahsoka's reeling from this, uh, this event. She's felt it through the Force. Maul has also felt it through the Force. It's a massive, like, ripple. A huge dark side boost has just occurred. And then we see it. Rex receiving Order 66 from Sidious. And as uh, Rex says, yes, Lord Sidious, Ahsoka appears. Well, she runs up to him because they, the, they were on the bridge. What do, I, what do I mean she appears? She runs up to him. So she doesn't hear him say Sidious. Now, I must say, I'm happy that they didn't show us other Jedi getting gunned down in Order 66. I don't know if I could have taken that. But luckily it just focuses on Ahsoka and a bit of more, but mostly Ahsoka and uh, Rex, really. So she rushes to Rex and tells him, I think something's happened to Anakin. Something terrible has happened to Anakin. But Rex is shaken. He, he doesn't want to do Order 66. He doesn't want to shoot his one of his greatest friends. One of his people he spent almost the entire war with. He doesn't want to kill Ahsoka. He's shaken. He drops his helmet. He's so mentally conflicted right now, like this chip is telling him he has to kill the Jedi, but he doesn't want to. He, he's really like, got a connection with Ahsoka and he, he just doesn't want to kill her. 
the, the chip is it's overriding his normal thoughts. He has to do this. This is his duty. And then the two clones behind Ahsoka aim at her after receiving Order 66 as well. At this point, Rex seems to have uh, got control of himself, I guess. No. I'll do it, he says. And with tears falling down his face, his blasters shaking in his hands, he aims at Ahsoka. And as he's doing this, he says to Ahsoka through tears, Find him. Find Fives. Because, obviously, Fives was the one that had the inhibitor chip removed first. And there's a whole little arc about it where he almost killed the Chancellor, I think. Yeah, I think that was the plan. Big old bad, big old bad guy. I miss Fives, man. Fucking Fox, what a dickhead. I know he's only doing his job, but what a dickhead anyway. So Ahsoka jumps on him, knocking him out, and uh, deflects the two blast bolts of the two clones that were behind her, killing them. The doors behind her to getting onto the bridge open, and there's a bunch of clones there. So Ahsoka's on like this little like holographic command table thing in the center, and she's the clones start surrounding her, start shooting her, and she's managing, Rex included actually. And she's managing to deflect all these bolts. She looks up at the like the little like ball thing. Like, I think that's the projector. And as it's th as the room starts filling with smoke and sparks, she uh, she manages to escape through all this blaster fire. And it's actually insane. Like fucking hell! I thought she was done for, but no, she managed to escape these clones who were firing on her. Order six has officially begun. Rex explains to his men that Order sixty six means all the Jedi are enemies of the Republic. They must be executed, and any clone who doesn't comply with Order 66 will also be executed. Now this makes us think that Rex is fully committed to Order 66 now, like his confliction is gone, the chip has overridden his his thoughts, he wants to kill Ahsoka. So he sends some troopers to make sure Maul is executed, two of the shock troopers, while him and the 501st, or whatever's left of the 501st, deal with Ahsoka. So Maul's prison container thing is opened up by these shock troopers and we see him is like he's like restrained as well he's got stuff over his mouth restraining his body so he can't use the force whatever technology is involved in that that stops him from unleashing the force is, is still there when the thing's opened and the two shock troopers start aiming at Maul and as they're about to kill him Ahsoka appears and she subdues these two shock troopers she doesn't kill them she doesn't want to kill the clones she's only killed the two that shot at her she, I don't think she's killed any more clones. So she aims at knocking them out and not killing them. Non-lethal, you know? So she frees Maul, and Maul's like, yo, what the fuck, thank you. <laughs> but she thinks Maul, this is Maul's plan. She thinks Maul turned the clones against her, but obviously not. And he's like, this is, this is, this is amazing. He wasn't privy to the plan of her, her, his master, Lord Sidious, but turning the Jedi's own army against them is it's wonderful, in his words. And this is Ahsoka's like, oh fuck. This is this ain't good. She's not the only one. And honestly, I said it last episode, I knew Maul would have been used to free Ahsoka. Like, big brain over here. Both Maul and Ahsoka have felt the Jedi dying all over the galaxy. Like, it's been a huge, massive effect in the Force that both the dark side and the light side users have felt it. So Ahsoka hasn't really freed Maul so they could escape together. She's freed him to create a distraction so that less clones are on her and are actually drawn to Maul. And she doesn't even give him a lightsaber, she just wants him to cause chaos. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm not rooting for you. You're just a distraction. And I was like, yeah, you know what, fuck it. Kill some clones, what of it, I'm free. A dis an, un an unarmed Maul and an Ahsoka Tano are just cutting about the Venator. With clones searching for both Maul and Ahsoka. Trying to kill him. So she sneaks away into this room which contains some astromech droids. And it's probably like the droid room. TM, I guess. And she activates them so that they can, um, so that you can access the uh, Files on Fives and kind of escape Order 66. She uses them to access the Files on Fives. Obviously, you're going the inhibitor chip, the investigation, the report from the Kaminoans, you know how it is. We find out Rex submitted a grievance report, which I don't know. But, you know, it goes over his feelings of it's sealed at first, but after using Anakin's password, 80. 8108, I think. Um, we see Rex talking about Fives and his feelings regarding the inhibitor chip and what its purpose may be. He's become aware that there's a chip in his brain, but he doesn't know what it does, what purpose it serves. We then see Maul tearing through some clone troopers. Even without his weapon, he's a force to be reckoned with. 
He's he's insane. He's tearing through these clones, ripping off parts of the ship, decapitating clones with it, crushing clones between two parts of the ship. Mad. It's insane. <laughs> the carnage we see from all is crazy. So as the clones are kind of trying to slow him down and divert him so that he doesn't go to the hangar bay, he disarms them. There's one clone left with a blaster. He, he tells the other two to uh, close the blast doors. As they do so, he runs through the blast door. But Maul has other ideas, so he pulls him. And as the blast door's closing, it chops off his arm. He's just maimed a clone. And that's where we hear they're trying to divert Maul. So Maul has, hit, Maul has heard their plan, and so like, what's, what's going on in that spiky head of his? What's, what's, he, what's he streaming about? So the droids R7 and Chipper, or no, Cheap, sorry, get in the way of Rex as he's running to encounter Maul. And Rex is angry at these droids, like, what the, what the frick are you doing, man? You crosswired. But they uh, close all the blast doors surrounding him and then give him a message from Ahsoka where she tells him about the inhibitor chip and how she can help him, telling him that, telling Rex that it's not his fault. He's not the one t t to blame for shooting Ahsoka, which I thought was very nice of her. So Rex points a blaster at R7 and it's like, where is she? And she's right behind him. I'm right here. And then fucking R7 zaps him, knocking him out, and they take him to a medical bay. <laughs> they hoist Rex onto three astromech droids and just cart him off to a medical bay. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. This is as the droid, this is as the clones are break through the blast doors. So they put him in like this scanning machine thing, kind of like a CT scanner, but it's futuristic. And they have one of these uh, medical droids scan Rex's head for any signs of the inhibitor chip. Now at first, this, this chip isn't coming up after many scans. Now it leads me to believe that Republic scanners are programmed in such a way that they don't detect the inhibitor chip. That would that'd make sense. It would mean that they wouldn't be able to find out about it if any clones were damaged like in the head during battle. They wouldn't be able to find out about it. But only like Kamen own and special technology is calibrated to detect this. That would that'd make sense why it was only discovered with fives and not really early on during the war. But Soka uses the force. She touches Rex's head. Does that more with the force? The force is with me. And then soon Rex starts repeating that and then the inhibitor chip appears on the scanner. So they send Rex under to get it removed as the clones are breaking into the medical bay. Yeah, the medical bay. They're very close to breaking in. They're using a little like astro you know how the astromex have the little thing that pops out and point to computers and like twist around and stuff. The clones have a handheld one of them to break into the uh, medical bay. And as they're sending one of the clones manage to bust in and they start firing Ahsoka. However, she's focusing on not killing the clones. She wants to she wants to subdue them. She doesn't want to kill them. They're still clones. She, she, they, even though they're trying to kill her, she doesn't really want to kill them. But we know that from force push and stuff, clones just die anyway. So maybe she is killing them. But she's not focusing on deflecting blaster bots into them, she's deflecting on like knocking them out. I, it's by, by what I what we see as this happens, Rex begins to wake up. The surgery is a success. Well the surgery is um, as the surgery has happened. We don't know if it's a success, but he's waking up, he's reaching for his blaster. This is all while Ahsoka's deflecting blaster bots. She actually gets hit in the hand I think which disarms her over Shoto, the offhand lightsaber. And as we see Ahsoka being almost overwhelmed with blaster fire, we see Rex fire a couple shots. And before we know if it's Ahsoka or the clones who've been shot, we see the clones fall and the blast door shut. No, Ahsoka turns to Rex, like, Rex, you okay? Yeah, kid. Yeah, I'm fine. Rex is no longer under the uh, influence of the inhibitor chip. Rex is not over party, guys. We don't have to cancel him now, okay? I know we might have cancelled him because he was trying to attack Ahsoka, but that wasn't his fault, okay? Let's not cancel Rex, all right? And he goes on to reveal to Ahsoka that it's not just the 501st, it's not just the people on the ship. It's the entire Grand Army of the Republic. They're hunting the Jedi Knights. And the episode ends on the medical bait door being cut into. Mad. That was such a sick episode. The next episode airs on Monday, May the 4th. And it's I hope it's a longer one. It was with the Rebels finale, so I'm hoping this episode's a longer one as well. Holy shit, Ahsoka and Rex are on a ship filled with clones heading to the capital of the Republic, now Empire. <laughs> this is fucking insane. And Maul is also there doing something. I hope that the person who opened the door is Maul. I think that'd be very cool. We'll never know though. So, well we will know, but we have to wait a couple of days. So if you've enjoyed, what do you think of the episode? Tell me down below. Subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Hey, oh, uh.
I've been up for like two hours. Two hours. Yo, bitch, can you took a few showers? Few showers. I don't buy, I just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.